Hello again everyone, it's me Matt, I hope you're having a wonderful day, I appreciate you stopping by on today's video, which is in regards to, yes, submarines. You guys have been begging me to make videos about submarines for a very long time, and today we are focusing on American submarines and their various classes. Now, it's safe to say one of the most destructive and deadly pieces of hardware out there in the world is the submarine. No matter what type or class a submarine is, they really are a force to be reckoned with on the seas or even beyond the seas, whether it be launching nuclear-capable missiles, Tomahawk cruise missiles, harpoons. These things can do quite a lot of tasks, and it doesn't just always involve naval firepower. Of course, there is also the capability of launching special forces from uh, you know, submarines and other capabilities that you just don't get on some other naval craft. Now, the US Navy has a formidable submarine fleet capable of launching just about any type of attack from the sea to the sea or from the sea to the ground. Very, very large force with a 20,000 strong crew of both reserve and full-time submariners, which is pretty cool. Now, I also know of a submariner. His name is Jive Turkey. He has a fantastic channel. He does a lot of gameplay videos on cold waters, which I would encourage you to go check out. I have played it myself also. It's a fantastic submarine game if you haven't checked it out. But in terms of classifications of these ships, there are different variants and classes of which the U.S has as their own submarine fleet, and I'd like to go over a few of them. Let's start off with attack submarines, or SSNs. An attack submarine are designed to seek and destroy enemy submarines and surface ships and project power ashore with Tomahawk cruise missiles and special operation forces. Of course, one of the largest capabilities and most common capabilities of submarines of today is actually carrying out intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, or ISR. These missions help support the battle group drastically in what they're trying to do. They also are able to engage in mine warfare if necessary. With the number of foreign diesel-electric air-independent propulsion submarines increasing, the United States Submarine Force relies heavily on technological superiority and the speed, endurance, mobility, stealth and payload afforded by nuclear power to retain its dominance and under the undersea battle space. The Navy has three classes of SSNs in service. The Los Angeles class SSN 688 submarines, which are the backbone of the submarine force, with approximately 40 now in commission. 30 of those are equipped with 12 vertical launch systems or VLS tubes for firing Tomahawk cruise missiles. The Navy also has the three Seawolf class submarines. These were commissioned July 19th, 1997. The USS Seawolf SSN 21 is exceptionally quiet, fast, well armed, and equipped with advanced sensors. Though lacking the VLS, the Seawolf class has 8 torpedo tubes and can hold up to 50 weapons in its torpedo room. The third ship of the class is the USS Jimmy Carter, or SSN-23, and it has a 100-foot hull extension called the Multi-Mission Platform. This hull section provides for additional payloads to accommodate advanced technology used to carry out classified research and development for enhanced warfighting capabilities. The Navy continues to build the next generation attack submarine, the Virginia SSN 774 class. More than a dozen Virginias have been commissioned to date, and they will replace the Los Angeles class submarines as they retire. The Virginia class has several innovations that significantly enhance its warfighting capabilities, including a littoral or coastal operations capability. Virginia class SSNs have fly-by-wire ship control systems that provides improved shallow water ship handling. The class has special features to support special operations forces, including a reconfigurable torpedo room which can accommodate a large number of special forces operators and all their equipment for prolonged deployments and future offboard payloads. The class also has a large lock-in lock-out chamber for divers. In Virginia class SSNs, traditional periscopes have been supplemented by two photonics masts that host a visible and infrared digital camera atop a telescoping arm. With the removal of the barrel telescopes, the ship's control room has been moved down an entire deck away from the hull's curvature, affording it more room and an improved layout that provides the commanding officer with an enhanced situational awareness of his ship. Additionally, through the extensive use of modular construction, open architecture and commercial off-the-shelf components, the Virginia class is designed to remain state-of-the-art as for practice of its entire operational life through rapid introduction of new systems and payloads, which basically means that the ship is somewhat modular. 
As part of the Virginia class third or block three contract, the Navy redesigned approximately 20% of the ship to reduce their acquisition costs. Most of these changes are found in the bow, where the traditional air-backed sonar sphere has been replaced with a water-backed large aperture bow or lab array, which reduces acquisition and life cycle costs while providing enhanced passive detection capabilities. The new bow also replaces the 12 individual vertical launch system tubes with two large diameter 87 inch Virginia payload tubes or VPTs, each capable of launching six cruise missiles which are Tomahawk capable. The VPTs actually simplify construction, they reduce acquisition costs and provide for more payload flexibility than the smaller VLS tubes due to their added volume. The design changes were successfully proven during USS North Dakota's or SSN 784's Builder Sea Trials in August 2014. Block 3 hulls include the 8 ships procured from 2008 through 2013, which are SSN 784 through to 791. Block 5 submarines or SSN 792 to 801 incorporate design changes focused on reduced total ownership cost or RTOC. By making these smaller scale design changes to increase the component level life cycle of the submarine, the Navy will increase periodically between depot maintenance availabilities and increase the number of deployments, basically meaning a quicker turnaround for the ships. Blocks 1 to 3 Virginias are planned to undergo 4 depot maintenance availabilities and conduct 14 deployments. Block 4 RTOC efforts are intended to reduce planned availabilities by 1 to 3 and increase deployments to 15. The Navy refers to this as 315. The next major change will be incorporation of the Virginia Payload Module or VPN, planned for the Block 5 submarines which is starting between 2019 and still carrying on through today up until 2022. VPM, currently in early concept development phase, will add four additional payload tubes, each capable of carrying seven Tomahawk cruise missiles. This will improve the Virginia class design. The VPM tubes will be very similar to the VPTs utilized on the Block 3 and Ford ships. By using these tubes in the VPN, the Navy will leverage mission proven components for the new module, thereby minimizing design and cost risks. The general characteristics of the Virginia class are as follows. The builder is General Dynamics Electric Boat Division and Huntington Ingalls Industry in Newport News Shipbuilding. The propulsion is one nuclear reactor attached to one shaft. Her length is around 377 feet or 114.8 meters. Her beam is 34 feet or 10.36 meters and her displacement is approximately 7,800 tons or 7,925 metric tons submerged. Her maximum speed is roughly 25 plus knots with 28 plus miles per hour or 46.3 kilometers an hour. She has a crew of 132 members of 15 officers and 117 enlisted sailors. Her armament is Tomahawk cruise missiles, 12 VLS tubes, SSN 774 and 783, or two VPTs, SSN 784 and beyond. She also has Mark 48 ADCAP torpedoes of four torpedo tubes each. For the Seawolf class of submarines, it was also built by General Dynamics Electric Boat Division. It has one nuclear reactor and one shaft. Depending on the SSN designation, it can either be 353 feet long or 107 meters, or 453 feet long or 138 meters. The beam is around 40 feet or 12.2 meters, and its displacement varies between 9,138 tons to 12,158 tons. Its speed is 25 plus knots or 28 plus miles per hour or 46.3 kilometers an hour. The crew is 140 with 14 officers and 126 enlisted sailors. The armament is Tomahawk cruise missiles, Mark 48 torpedoes and 8 torpedo tubes in total. And last but not least of the attack submarine class is the Los Angeles class. Again, one nuclear reactor and one shaft. 360 feet long or 109.73 meters, a beam of 33 feet or 10.6 meters. Displacement is approximately 6,900 tons. It can go at 25 plus knots or 28 plus miles per hour or 46.3 kilometers an hour. Has a crew of 16 officers and 127 enlisted sailors. It can carry Tomahawk cruise missiles, VLS tubes for SSN 719 and later, Mark 48 torpedoes and 4 torpedo tubes in total. Next up is the fleet of ballistic missile submarines or SSBNs. Since the 1960s, strategic deterrence has been the SSBN's sole mission, providing the United States with its most survival and enduring nuclear strike capability. 
basically creeping death of the ocean and can launch just about anywhere at any time in the world. The Navy's ballistic missile submarines, often referred to as boomers, serve as an undetectable launch platform for the Submarine Launch Ballistic Missile Platform, or SLBMs. They are designed specifically for stealth and precise delivery of nuclear warheads. Each of the 14 Ohio-class SSBNs originally carried up to 24 SLBMs with multiple independently targeted warheads. However, under new provisions of the new Strategic Armed Reduction Treaty, each submarine had four of its own missile tubes permanently deactivated and now carry only a maximum of 20 missiles. The SSBN's strategic weapon is the Trident II D5 missile, which provides increased range and accuracy and out now beyond the service of the Trident 1 C4 missile. SSBNs are specifically designed for extended deterrent patrols to decrease the amount of time required for replenishment and maintenance. Ohio class submarines have three large diameter logistics hatches that allow sailors to rapidly transfer supply pallets, equipment, replacement modules, and machinery components thereby increasing their operational availability. The Ohio class designs allows the submarines to actually operate for 15 or more years between major overhauls. On average, the submarine spends 77 days at sea, followed by 35 days in port for maintenance. Each SSBN has two crews, blue and gold, which alternate manning the submarines and taking them out on patrol. This maximizes the SSBN's strategic capability and availability and reduces the number of submarines required to meet strategic requirements and allows for proper crew training and readiness for morale. There are currently an astonishing 14 SSBNs in service with the US Navy, which goes to say that there are literally so many nuclear subs floating around in the ocean somewhere ready to deter any kind of nuclear threat for the United States, and that's pretty darn impressive. Of course, there is also the Guided Missile Submarines, or SSGNs. Ohio-class Guided Missile Submarines, or SSGNs, provide the Navy with unprecedented strike and special operation mission capabilities from a stealthy platform. Armed with tactical missiles and equipped with superior communication capabilities, SSGNs are capable of directly supporting combatant commanders' strike and special operation forces, which require specific needs around the world. The 1994 Nuclear Posture Review determined that the United States needed only 14 of its 18 SSBNs to meet the nation's strategic force needs. Therefore, the Navy decided to transform four Ohio-class submarines into conventional land attack and special operations forces platforms. This allowed the Navy to leverage existing submarine technology while at the same time expanding the capability to meet the current and future needs of the US combatant commanders. The SSGN program office refueled and converted four SSBNs into SSGNs in a little more than five years at a significantly lower cost and less time than building a new platform. USSS Ohio, or SSGN-726, entered the shipyard on November 15, 2002 and completed conversion in December 2005 and deployed for the first time in October 2007. USSS Florida SSGN-728 commenced its refueling conversion in August 2003 and returned to the fleet in April 2006. USSS Michigan or SSGN-727 started its shipyard availability in October 2004 and delivered in November 2006. And USS Georgia SSGN-729 completed conversion in December 2007. The Navy entered into a unique partnership to bring the SSGN concept to fruition. All four submarines required an Engineered Refueling Overhaul, or ERO, in addition to extensive conversion work. Combined, the four SSGNs represent more than half of the submarine's force's vertical launch payload capability, with each SSGN capable of carrying up to 154 Tomahawk land cruise missiles. The missiles are loaded in seven shot multiple all-round canisters, or MAX, in up to 22 missile tubes. These missile tubes can also accommodate additional stowage canisters for Special Operations Forces equipment, food and other consumables to extend the submarine's ability to remain forward deployed in support of combatant commanders' taskings. The missile tubes are also available to accommodate future payloads such as new types of missiles, unmanned area vehicles and unmanned undersea vehicles. The SSGNs have the capacity to host up to 66 Special Operations Forces personnel at a time. Additional berthing was installed in the missile compartment to accommodate the added personnel. And other measures have been taken to extend the amount of time the SOF forces can spend deployed aboard these ships. 
The two forwardmost missile tubes are permanently converted to lockout chambers that allow the clandestine insertion and retrieval of Special Operation Forces personnel. Each lockout chamber can also accommodate a Dry Deck Shelter, or DDS, enhancing the SSGN's Special Operations Forces capabilities. During conversion, each SSGN received a common submarine radio room and two high data rate antennas for significantly enhanced communication capabilities. These additions allow the SSGN to serve as a forward deployed clandestine small combat joint command center. The SSGN is a key element of the Navy's future fighting force. With its tremendous payload capability, dual crew deployment concept and inherent stealth, each SSGN brings mission flexibility and enhanced capabilities to the warfighter around the world at any one time. It's safe to say that this is probably one of the most versatile and more powerful ships other than the nuclear capable ships out there. Of course, the SSGNs really aren't primarily focused on engaging other submarines. They are more based upon land engagements and left over to the attack submarines is the engagements of other submarines. That being said though, she still can do everything that the other ships can do. Ohio classes also have one nuclear reactor and one shaft. The length is around 560 feet or 170 meters. Her beam is 42 feet or 12.8 meters. In displacement, she weighs around 16,764 tons when surfaced and 18,750 tons when submerged. Her speed is 20 plus knots or 23 plus miles per hour and 36.8 kilometers an hour. The crew is 15 officers with 144 enlisted sailors. The armament has up to 154 Tomahawk missiles, Mark 48 torpedoes, which can be placed into four torpedo tubes. An interesting factoid for you all, the year 2000 actually marks the 100th anniversary of the US Navy's submarine force. Today, attack submarines are one of the most lethal weapons of the nation's arsenal for the United States and other countries around the world, and the ballistic missile submarine constitutes a very important component of the country's strategic deterrent. The original stealth weapon, the submarine, cruises the world's oceans, unseen, carrying out a variety of missions, every single day, all the time, non-stop. And it's safe to say that these are one of the most respected careers in the US Navy. Uh, I do not know of any submariners personally, but I do know uh, Jive Turkey and he spoke about some of his experiences. I have a huge respect for the fleet of submariners around the world. So thank you so much for those who have served or still do serve on these beautiful vessels today. Um, they are a little terrifying to say the least. Uh, I hate the sea. I've never been a fan of it. But knowing that these things are patrolling the oceans every single day keeps me, uh, you know, a little bit more... Uh, aware that the Navy has a lot of firepower behind its back if it needs to, and that's not just the United States, that's everyone. I appreciate you stopping by on today's video, everyone. Please leave me a like if you enjoyed it and also a comment. If you want to support my Patreon, you can go check out the description box below. If you want to be notified of any upcoming videos, you can also click the little bell by the subscribe button. I want to thank everyone who has been supporting me, either via Patreon or PayPal or any other forms of support to my channel. It really does mean a lot. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I'll catch you on the next one. All the best. Bye-bye.